and he came back and he saluted the captain and he said, Sir, ship torpedoed in number five hole, cargo exploding and burning, ship on fire aft and sinking by the stern. I was born in Bradford and I lived in Bradford. It was the biggest uh, mill town in the north of England. Well, I'm not saying it might have been. It was full of mills, all mills, all, all built, and they all, all ran on coal. The smoke were out of this world. Everybody had a bad chest and coughed. And if when smoke were coming from mills, if wind changed, you had to shout and tell it, wind's changing, and they you had to help them get the washing in so it didn't get spots up, smoky spots on it. The experience in the sea cadets learnt me how to handle a boat and gave me confidence. And you told them when you went for your in, for, to, to register to be conscripted that uh, you, 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 you were in sea cadets and you got a letter from the sea cadets to say that you were efficient at this, that and the other. You, you, you wanted to, to volunteer for it, to get it navy to see the world. But you, you know, your parents said, don't you go, don't you dare go. My dad took me to uh, to station. They sent you a voucher uh, for for a ticket, and I was I was told that I had to go to uh, Pathelli, North Wales, HMS Glendower, and they trained us for uh, to be sailors. There was uh, this fellow there, and he were uh, he spoke ever so posh, and he said everything three times. He had a great big belly on him, and he said you're going to be we're going to train you to shoot, to be on merchant ships and shoot at aircraft. Merchant ships went all over and all you were hoping for, you'd go to a lovely place. And I went up to Glasgow, up to Lockyo. We were in Lockyo, that's a big lock, up it right in north of Scotland. And then I was put on a ship on the Induna. She was an old tramp. She was 15 years old when I joined her. And then we were told she was going to Russia. And we were told in eight days it would be colder than we'd ever known. We didn't know what it would what be like. We got in this storm, and it was a storm of a lifetime. And she was dipping and going down, and halfway down, and then she'd come up. And I remember saying to 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 me, to our captain, "Look at that ship over there, sir. She's halfway down. She's halfway down. Oh, for a look, she's good. Half of her are under sea, and half of she's coming up." And he said, "Yes, boy. Have you thought if you were on that ship?" This one had looked just the same. It really scared me, did that then. And then all of a sudden, bang, there were a bang and a bloody big flash. We were carrying uh, aviation spirit in uh, drums on tween deck, that's where it shelves is. And they were all, all breaking up and burning and exploding, one after other. And uh, all of a sudden then the mate came back and he came back and he saluted the captain. And he said, sir, ship torpedoed in number five hole, cargo exploding and burning, ship on fire aft and sinking by the stern.
the, the weather were breaking. It was really bad weather. And when we got to, to sea, we were getting near at sea and we got down and the boat, the lifeboat were coming out oh, six foot or so and then smashing at side up bridge, side up ship. And it did that about four times and it was bending and you could hear it creaking. And uh, all of a sudden then, it, it, the, it exploded. It put another torpedo in her and she just went down with the stern, up and gracefully down. And we were, that was it, she'd gone. And we said, oh, oh hell, oh dear. And you saw them all on deck as it were going down. And then all great big bubbles came up. And if one of them bubbles had come up on that lifeboat, it had tipped us. We were frightened. You were frightened and you were sorry for them. You know that they'd gone. And we rode to where the ship had gone down the smooth part, but nobody came up. The others had no, they're just ordinary gear on like we are now. And it was 30 below. And they were, they were folding up as they went. And then there was a kid there and he was crying for his mother. And he was only 15 or 16. And he was crying for his mother. And I said, uh, say a prayer. And he said, uh, what do I, how do I pray? I said, say the Our Father and then say it a few times. God will listen to you. They were shivering and cuddling up to each other. And we were, we, we were doing as best to keep her, keep her afloat. It was a matter of keep her afloat. You didn't go to sleep. As I said if you Robinson was same. We said if you go to sleep, you'll uh, you'll not wake up. You'll freeze to death. And so consequently, I sat down. We, we, when we bailed, and she was well up out of water, we. Uh, we we got her, uh, we were all right. And I used to snuggle up inside of him and he pressed himself inside of me. And we kept each other warm. You had corned beef and the, the, oh, we had no water. The water was frozen. The, the, there were two water, two or three water bottles and they were frozen solid right to the middle. We broke the ice and then we started, we were thirsty and we started sucking the ice. Somebody said, oh, there's a ship. And on port side, there was this here warship, and it was coming towards us. And it, the sea was very rough then. It were, Waves were up oh, as high as this ceiling. And when you were down, you were down. And uh, we saw, we, we, we waved to him, and they were coming to us. And then all of a sudden, he turned to his starboard. Yes, mm -hmm. oh, you were waving and shouting, definitely. But you couldn't make him hear you. You were frightened. You thought you were going to be lost. You thought about home and you thought about your people and you said your prayers. Somebody said, they've seen us and they, 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 they manoeuvred and they came at us three different ways, three points. And we thought, bloody hell, you know, are they going to pick us up and are they going to shoot us and are they going to leave us? And then it, one of them started pointing at me. I was stood well up with my hands way up in the air. And he started pointing. And he, somebody said, one of, Robinson said, he wants you, Chich. And so they manoeuvred alongside and I put my hands up rail on wire to pull myself up. But I couldn't have pulled myself out. 
there were no strength left in me and they pulled me out. I got into Bradford at first thing at morning and I came across the road and then across a, a playing field. And I was at home. And we lived third house down, a tourist house. I got my key out, opened the door, shouted up steps, It's me, I'm home. And my eldest sister, she was 15 then, our Kathleen, she's dead now. She came down and said, They all think you're dead. But I never did. I said, you what? And my mother came down and said, where the hell have you been? And she gave me a right big hug. She said, go up to Crofts and tell your dad you're home. Anyway, I went up to Crofts and I went to time office and I knocked on this window. I said, can I speak to Harry Byrne, please, my dad? Are you Harry Burns, lad? I said, yes. He picked phone up and he said, your dad's coming running. He just got hold of me and gave me a big hug. He had tears running down his face. 